thought today I'd like you to turn with me to the book of Colossians in the very first chapter. First chapter of the book of Colossians. I'm going to read verses 9 through 14. Paul writes to the church at Colossae and says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power, unto all patience and long suffering with joyfulness, being, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and hath translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood even the forgiveness of sins. Amen to the reading. Uh, Paul, of course, writing, as I already said, to the church at Colossae, and it was in response to a uh, report that he had uh, received from Epaphras, who was a minister at the, at the church in Colossae. Uh, and he had a report of their faith and their love for the saints. Uh, this had come to Paul's ears, and he was writing to encourage them against false doctrine and man-made philosophies. True wisdom comes from God, amen? And we realize that and we know that. Uh, and so Paul and his companions, he made them to know that we will continue to pray for this, uh, pray for you. And in Colossians 1 and 9, it says, For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you, and desire that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. Three words there, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. Uh, I teach a Bible class on those three words. And uh, what Paul is trying to say, that they should be filled with the knowledge of his will. In other words, that word knowledge, the Greek word is epignosis, I believe. It means full knowledge uh, and experiential knowledge, as Elder Code used to say in Niles when we were going to ministerial classes down there. It means that you have knowledge of how God works. You have a knowledge, you have some experiential knowledge because you've had some experiences with God. God's delivered you, first of all, it says here, from the powers of darkness, amen? And he has changed your position or put you into his kingdom, amen? And so uh, that knowledge is a full knowledge, and so... Uh, it's one of those things that there are people out there that have knowledge. Timothy, uh, Paul wrote to Timothy and said they're ever learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Uh, and the Bible makes us to know that was one of the condemnations that the Lord had for his people. Uh, the prophet Hosea said, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because they didn't have a working relationship with God all the time. And that's what we need our relationship with God is not a part-time thing. It has to be a full-time thing or else we don't have a relationship. So they didn't have a full-time relationship when, when they were walking with God, of course. Uh, certainly God blessed them and took care of them. God defeated their enemies for them. Uh, but when they weren't walking with God, when they turned to idols that could never save them, uh, could never help them in any way, they could pray to them all day long, uh, and they're not going to move, they're not going to hear, they're not going to see, uh, they're not going to speak to them, they're not going to do anything for them. And so he said, because they have rejected knowledge, I will reject them also. Uh, and so he said that you won't be any priest to me because you've forgotten the law of your God. He said, I will also forget your children. Uh, and so what we need to know is that we get the knowledge, that, that not experiential knowledge with God, uh, that full knowledge of God, and we need to know what God's will is, he's telling them. This is what he wants them to, to understand and to know, uh, because they were fighting against some things at that time. Uh, there was some there was some false teaching, there was man-made philosophies that were going around, and Paul's writing them to encourage them. And instead of Paul making a list of the things that he's going to go down through them one by one by one, uh, and 
uh, try to solve those problems for them. He's going to bring them back again to the remembrance of when they were saved, what God has done for them, and who God is, reminding them one more time uh, that, that God is all in all. Uh, and understanding is, of course, knowing how something works and why something works. I've said many times I have an understanding or I have a knowledge of electricity, but I don't have any understanding about it. I don't know how it moves. I don't know how it reacts. I just know I'm smart enough to stay away from it. Uh, and so I don't have any understanding about it. And so, but with God, amen, we understand how he works. Uh, we may not know everything about it, but we understand that when we take things to God in prayer, as our song said, we know that God is moved by our prayers. We know that God is moved by the infirmities that we have. We know that God is moved by the problems that we have because he's a compassionate God and God is full of love. Uh, and he's not going to leave us and he's not going to forsake us. He's not going to do any of those things. But if we stay close to him, he will stay close to us. And so the wisdom that Paul is talking about here is the combination of all my knowledge, all my understanding, all my experiences in life, both spiritual and natural, uh, applied in a godly manner and a moral manner in my life and in my conversation and my daily walk with God. Uh, it's all of those things all wrapped together. And so this is the reason Paul's praying for them. Again, that they might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing being fruitful in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. That's what God expects of us. We don't know what the will of God is for us. God wants us to walk in a way that's pleasing to him. God wants us to walk in a way that's fruitful unto him. Uh, and that's not just how many people you can get to come to church, but it's how you conduct your life, how you conduct your affairs. Uh, if you have a, a, a reputation for being an honest person, if you provide honesty when there is no honesty, that's what God expects of us, that if we walk worthy of God unto his all-pleasing and we're fruitful in every good work and we're increasing time after time after time in the knowledge of God, and so the accumulation of all those things uh, will make us fruitful in every good work. And so I think every one of us wants to, to hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant, at the end of all things. And so he says, strengthened with all might according to his glorious power and to all patience and long suffering with joyfulness. Paul's reminding them again of who saved them. He's reminding them again of who God is. Amen. Uh, if God be for us, who can be against us? Absolutely nobody can stand against us. And so he says that we're strengthened with all might. And as Paul said in another place, I believe it was in the book of Philippians, he said, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. We need to have that same attitude in us, that whatever it is that God wants us to do, whatever it is that God wills us to do, we know because of the strength that God gives us that we are able to do it because his power resides in us. Those that are filled with the Holy Ghost, we have strength, we have power. Uh, I believe that we, we aren't even knowledgeable about yet. Uh, but yet we're strengthened with all might. I, I, I don't need any more strength because I got God's strength in me. Amen. Uh, according to his glorious power, the Bible says all power in heaven and earth is given unto him. Uh, and he is before things and all things consist by him. Uh, and that we're supposed to have patience and be long suffering. But he says with joyfulness. Amen. A lot of times patience is not a joyful thing. A lot of times long-suffering is not a joyful thing, but yet God wants us to be joyful about these things. As I, I kidded about, uh, I think a week ago, I said, because we're wearing masks in the store now, I said, nobody can see my joyful smile when I'm standing in line waiting for somebody else to check out with 400,000 items. And so, uh, but the thing is, is uh, we need to have patience in, regardless of what the situation is. Now that's a minor thing, okay? But even in the great things that we need to have patience. We need to have patience with people that we talk to and that we witness to. We need to have patience with people that are uh, maybe struggling with their salvation. We need to help bear the infirmities of the weak. And so he says, giving thanks unto the Father, which has made us meet to be partakers 
of the inheritance of the saints in light. Light is, we heard somewhat about today, light is an illuminating substance, you know, because we once walked in darkness. We once covered up everything that we did that was wrong. But now when God comes into our life, those things are illuminated. When we first come to God, those things are illuminated. We realize that all of sin comes short the glory of God, realize that we were all sinners and we were worthy of death. But yet, by the blood of Jesus Christ, we've been made whole. By the sacrifice that he made on Calvary's tree, we are able to be translated, it says, into the kingdom of his dear son. So, whereas before we walked in darkness, now he wants us to walk in light. He wants us to walk in illumination. He wants us to walk in truth all the time. Amen? It's not a part-time thing. Peter put it like this. He said, But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, or a purchased people, that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had obtained mercy, but now have had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy, in whom we have redemption in Colossians again, through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. This is what God wants for us, amen? This is what God wants for you, is that his blood will make you free from the sin that has uh, plagued your life and the darkness that seems to uh, be a cast over you. Uh, we walked in darkness at one time, and but now God has brought us out of that darkness and he translated, the word translated there uh, has a couple of meanings. It's a transference and one, one definition, but another is a change in situation or place. And I thought about that when I, I first, God started first dealing with me a week ago on this particular subject, uh, that I thought to myself, I thought, because of this, my situation has changed, amen? I had a situation where I was in a bad place, but now my situation has changed, and your situation can change too. All it takes is repenting of your sins, submitting yourselves to water baptism in Jesus' name for the remission of those sins, and God will fill you with the gift of the Holy Ghost, give you the power to be able to do those things that he wants you to do, amen? Not their things that you want to do, but the things that he wants you to do so that you will be, uh, know his will. Uh, and so Paul was writing this letter to the, them and he was encouraging them, trying to show them and, and the, the uh, man-made philosophies that were coming into the church and trying to sway them from one side to the other. Uh, and he was telling them that, bringing them back to the remembrance of, look, this is what you come out of. And this is who has brought you out. And this is who he is, reminding them again that God, Jesus, is the image of the invisible God. He is all that there ever will be. The book of Hebrews says he's the uh, express, uh, express image or the exact stamp, the exact imprint of who God is. And in the book of John, he even speaks to Thomas and to Philip. And he asked, told them when they told him that he was going to go away and prepare a place for them, just to paraphrase. And he says, um, have I been with you so long time you don't know who I am? He says, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Amen? In other words, if you want to see the Father, look at me. If you want to see who he is, look at me. If you want to see the power that he has, look at me, is what Jesus is saying. Because he is God manifest in the flesh. And if God is on our side, who can be against us? It's God's will. I think District Elder said this last week. It's God's will that every man should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. And that's still true today. It's God's will that every man be saved, come to the knowledge of the truth. And Paul is speaking truth here to these saints so that they'll be encouraged, so that they'll be strengthened, so that they'll realize the one that they have something to do with has all power, amen? And as long as he is on their side, then they have nothing to worry about. In the second chapter, he goes on to say, he says, have you have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. He said, rooted and built up in him, established in the faith, 
as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. In other words, once we're saved, it's up to us after that. We need to study, we need to pray, uh, we need to be you know, a part of the service somewhere, whether it's online or whether it's in person, uh, and increase our knowledge and our understanding, increase our strength even. Uh, I heard Elder South all talk about when we were first saved. Yeah, when you're first saved, nothing seems to bother you. But after a while, reality sets in. And, uh, you know, you realize that sometimes you have a struggle. But the Bible makes us know, as he, as Paul kind of lets the Colossians here know, he says, and you're complete in him, which is the head of all principality and power. Amen. He's the one that changed their situation. He's the one that brought them out of darkness into a marvelous light. He's the one that made them saints in light. And certainly God can do the same for each and every person that's listening today that may be watching this, that God is able to bring you out of whatever darkness you're in. It's, there's nothing that God will not forgive. There's nothing that you've done that that God will not forgive. Man may not forgive, but God will. Amen. Uh, and so he wants to bring you out of any darkness that you're in into his marvelous light. And we certainly thank and praise him today for his word and for his goodness and mercy to us. We thank you, thank him today that he did bring us out of darkness and into a marvelous light. Things are better than they've ever been. Amen. Things may be going on out there in the world. <clears throat> Pardon me, has already been said. Coronavirus can rage, but that's okay. We're in the calm of the storm. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Jesus can take us through anything. I thank you today for your attention. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you.